This is a Wicklow poem about St. Kevin. And it's a story about St. Kevin and the blackbird. A wonderful story in itself, with a little meditation on it. And I just happen to have it with me. Just happen to have it the inside pocket, just uh, absolutely by chance. Uh, uh, but, um, God, it looks 187 verses long. Well, no, no, it's all right. I mean, there's several other ones on this page. It's called St. Kevin and the Blackbird. And then there was St. Kevin and the Blackbird. The saint is kneeling, arms stretched out inside his cell. But the cell is narrow. So one turned up palm is out the window, stiff as a crossbeam when a blackbird lands and settles down to nest. Sorry, I better start again. When a blackbird lands and lays in it and settles down to nest. Kevin feels the warm eggs, the small breast, the tucked neat head and claws, and finding himself linked into the network of eternal life is moved to pity. Now he must hold his hand like a branch out in the sun and rain for weeks until the young are hatched and fledged and flown. And since the whole thing's imagined anyhow, imagine being Kevin. Which is he? Self-forgetful or in agony all the time from the neck on out down through his hurting forearms? Are his fingers sleeping? Does he still feel his knees? Or has the shut-eyed blank of under-earth crept up through him? Is there distance in his head? Alone and mirrored clear in love's deep river, to labor and not to seek reward, he prays. A prayer his body makes entirely, for he has forgotten self, forgotten bird, and on the river bank, forgotten the river's name. Good boy. Good boy. Um, well done. You know, you know that we all rejoice in your prize, Seamus. We absolutely rejoice in it, and long life and health to you both to enjoy it. Absolutely. And um, just before I say goodbye to you all, could we? Look